In terms of establishing a kind of hierarchy of communication, um, having learned last year from Romeo and Juliet, it was really important for Rick, the production manager, and Sophie, the stage manager, and I, and front of house team, and, and everybody to sort of really think long and hard about how we wanted the communication within the 75 or so people who were involved in the company, how we wanted that to work. The age range of our cast was everything from four, sort of 15 up to 65. I mean, you know, we had just this huge range of experiences and ages. And from the very beginning, I want everybody to know exactly what it is I expect of them and what it is they can expect of me. If you're running late to rehearsals, Peter is waiting for the hors d'oeuvres to come out of the oven to bring to us, and he's going to be 15 <laughs> minutes late. He needs to call Sophie on her cell phone. Or email challenge for me to give over that responsibility and trust other people to do it. But you have to because it's just impossible for one person to do it all. So it becomes a very it becomes a very sort of simple kind of triangular top down hierarchical structure where I'm at the top and then Rick's underneath me and then everybody sort of kind of reports to Rick and Kimberly works as my assistant director, which is sort of a catch all kind of job working alongside the actors, interacting with the extras, in some ways insulating me from some of that, which is good. It allows me to stay focused on what it is I need to do. And then we've got a production assistant, which was another sort of catch-all position, Leia, who's wonderful and incredibly organized, which was in really important for us all as a crew to have someone there who was able to take notes and do schedules and send out emails and be very communicative. And then you've got stage management, which is sort of Sophie and Mitch and all the ushers in front of house, Angie at the top and all the ushers and box office staff, costumes, Barbara Mason at the top, Mel and Becca, you know, just this sort of constant layering of crew and responsibilities. Now, if I flip the page over, on the back is a very handy dandy list of who to call for various categories of questions. You will also notice my name isn't on here. This is not only to protect me, it is also to protect you. These people are, are empowered to make decisions related to these areas because you really don't want me making them. You really don't. I'm real smart, real fun, and very creative. But I also a answer questions and usually I get those answers wrong. And it's really important that you follow this sort of decision-making tree as much as you can for your own safety and sanity as well as for my own. Um, so really for me, with that group of people in that room at the first rehearsals, it's incredibly important that all of the actors understand that I have an idea of what I'm doing. It's part of the sort of speech that I give, the kind of director's Joe vision Robert. speech, where I need them to know that I've looked at every single word and I've thought about every single option and that they need to trust me that I know where we're going with this. Because there will be, and there were, times this year where it just didn't feel like it was going anywhere. There's the big scene, the big sort of boys dance scene, sort of halfway through or three quarters of the way through the first half. And I knew from the beginning that it was gonna work. I knew it was gonna be a great scene. But for most of the principal actors, they had a really hard time understanding how it fit, why it was there. They didn't feel like it advanced the story or the narrative. And so ultimately, they just had to trust, and they, they did. They had to trust me that I kind of knew what I was doing and that, that I was going to make it work. And ultimately, I think it did work. So, you know, there's just an enormous amount of tension that exists in doing a production like this. So it's, na it's pretty natural that people's tempers begin to fray, but I do think 
that that kind of group commitment, that kind of unification feeling that we are all in this together and we're doing this for the benefit of the show and the benefits of our audience, I think that allows people to be very forgiving. and Or if not forgiving, at the very least, very uh, a, they're able to kind of put off a more immediate reaction until after the show. Sort of doing this for the good of the show, we need to play nice, we need to be p- pleasant and respectful. There's a lot of opportunity for things to go horribly wrong. And it just didn't. I mean, we just didn't have any serious problems. We had some we had some problems, but none of them were ever life threatening or you know, ever gonna endanger the show, which is good. When you've got thirteen principals and ten extras and twenty dancers and a crew of fifteen and you're the odd man out, as it were, you're the one who's not pulling your weight or you're the one who's not delivering a quality performance when everybody else is kicking in and doing more than is expected of them that is a lot of pressure a positive pressure I think that's a lot of positive pressure to conform to a higher standard and this year we absolutely had that higher standard people really stepped up when you see other people stretching and working and pushing everybody around you doing that you you gotta jump in you just have to and that ultimately ends up bringing about a, a very high quality show. I, every time I stand there in front of that group of people at the end, at the closing night or at the cast party, I'm just ready to do, I'm ready to go. Let's do it again. Let's get another show. Let's go. Get these people together. Let's start working. Get the costumes. Let's go. Um, it's so transitory. Theater's so transitory. And it's so sort of ephemeral and, and weightless. There's something about it. It just evaporates. When I was driving over here this morning through the quad, there is no evidence that we were ever even there. There's no evidence of it. We had more than 4,000 people who came and experienced something with us, which is going to change the way they think about theater. I feel that at the end of the show. I feel a great loss because it's gone but also a huge amount of hope because I'm I, I want to do it again I just want to and I find it very restrictive inside it just the words end up feeling kind of trapped by the space and so when I'm out there listening to Sean do the you know the, the world must be peopled speech and he's literally shouting that to the heavens in a way that's unbelievably funny and and hysterical and passionate and moving you bring that thing inside you bring that speech inside it would never work the same way it's just there's there's something magical about it there is just something magical about outdoor shakespeare it's just the way it is